Hi, teacher colleagues. Happy Friday. At least it's Friday where I am. Uh, I have a video for you today to help demonstrate how I do one of my very favorite labs with my students. It's super simple to set up and it's a really good way to get them working together, if you can have them work together, and get them practicing their pipetting skills which I have them practice beforehand. So there's a video link down below about an activity I do before this just to make sure they're ready for the pipetting. It also helps them practice their math skills and their critical thinking and problem solving skills. Make sure you read the description of the video down below because I go through a couple of activities that I do before I move into this one. Because I'm making this video during the COVID pandemic, I should clarify that this is a an activity that really has to be done with at least some of your students in the classroom. So if you're fully virtual, I don't think there's a way to recreate this. However, if you're hybrid and some of your students are in class and some are at home, you could set up Zoom breakout rooms and partner the in-class kids with kids at home, where the kids at home are helping them to problem solve and come up with uh, experimental design and do the calculations and the students in the lab are doing the actual pipetting. But because it involves micro pipetters, that's why I would say it's not really an option for kids to do at home. One of my favorite things about this lab is how easy it is to set up. So we all know how challenging labs can be to set up. And for this, literally all you need is a micro pipetter, a measuring container with water. This is actually, um, a mug that one of my students got me, but it is graduated. I had 300 mils of water in here, but I drank a bit because I forgot this wasn't my drinking mug. I'll drink just a little more. Take it to about 250. Okay, good enough. So we're gonna call that 250 milliliters. Doesn't really matter what amount of water you start with. Um, so you could be measuring it in a graduated cylinder for a bit more precision or in a beaker. You could even put it in a giant flask and make an entire liter of solution. The purpose is you're gonna make a mystery solution using water, your graduated micro, or I'm sorry, your uh, micro pipetter, and then a dye of your choice. So what I would suggest doing is just picking out any dye, food dyes work really well. Maybe pick one that you like the color of or that you have a decent bit of. Let's do red, why not? Um, for some reason I do blue for this a lot, but I don't really know why that is. So any dye will work. What's important is that you have enough of the dye remaining that the students can use the same dye you used. And you don't need to give them very much. 500 microliters is more than enough for each group. And so with this amount, I could do this lab 10 years in a row and it would be plenty. The next step is going to be to begin adding the dye to the water in order to make our solution. It's a mystery solution, and so we can really make it any concentration we want. And I'm gonna just tilt the camera so you can see a little better. In order to access the dye, I'm gonna to need to transfer it into a microtube because my pipette won't fit into the container it came in. My micro pipetter is set to 40. That's just kind of random. Um, that's what it was already set to, but I'll go ahead and start with a 40. And it is important when you do this to make sure that you're getting accurate measurements. So that didn't look like it fully went into the tip. I had some air bubbles, so I went again to make sure that I was able to really get 40 microliters. And then pipette up and down to really rinse your tip. And just decide, do you like that color for your mystery solution? I could go ahead and leave it at 40 microliters if I want but I want it to be a bit more concentrated. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add another 40. And again, pipette up and down, make sure you get every bit of dye rinsed out of that tip. And the dye is very viscous, so it kind of wants to stick. And I think I'm gonna do it one more time. So I wanna go just slightly darker. I'm gonna do one more 40. I'm not completely sure I got a good solid 40. So I'm gonna do it again, just because the students are gonna measure their accuracy against mine. 
And so if I don't measure really carefully for the final result, they're gonna potentially think they didn't do a great job. So there, I really rinsed the tip thoroughly to make sure every single bit of dye ended up in my mystery solution. I could go darker, I could go lighter. There's no right answer to how you make your mystery solution. The important thing is that you know how you made it. The next step is to make your calculation and then hold on to it until you actually do this lab. So I added 40, 40, 40. I did it three times, so my total amount of dye was 120 microliters of red dye. And the amount of water that I added it to was 250 milliliters of water. That's my total solution. I don't have to add my solute because it's in a unit that's a thousand times smaller, so it doesn't make any measurable difference to the total volume of my solution. Then I calculate it out. Couldn't do that in my head, so I had to take a quick visit to my calculator. It comes out to 0 0.48, and it's really important that they write that as microliters of dye per milliliter of solution, or at least microliters per milliliter. This is our mystery solution value. The next thing is to get ready to do this lab with your students. I don't give my students very many supplies to do this lab. I basically give them a few tubes, maybe three or four tubes. I give them a micropipette and tips. I'll often give them both sizes of micropipette so they can decide which one they want to use. They get a little vial of the red dye. I wouldn't actually give them nearly this much. I would probably give them a total of 500 microliters each. And they also get a sample of the mystery solution. Now, I don't usually give them the mystery solution in the same containers they get. So probably what I would do is put it in a big beaker in the middle of the room and then wait for kids to say, hey, can our team get some of that out of the beaker? Or I might put it in a tiny microtube like this because I like the volume of the mystery solution to be a little different from the volume they're making. The reason for this is that the kids tend to have the idea that you have to have the same total volume of a solution to get the concentration to match. And that's a, it's the biggest misconception of this lab. One of the things they really need to take away is it doesn't matter if this solution is in this beaker and they get 250 mils or it's in a giant beaker or it's in a teeny tiny container. The concentration is the ratio of dye to solution and so it's not affected by total volume. Be ready when you do this lab with your students for them to look at you like, what are we supposed to do? I usually just tell them the goal of this lab is to figure out the concentration of this mystery solution. And again, I've done activities with them beforehand with pipetting and with solutions. You can see the links down below to those. They should have everything they need to do this, but they have to problem solve to figure out how are they going to figure it out. The first connection they have to make is we need to make something that looks like that. And it'll take a little time for someone in the group to figure out, oh, we should make something that looks like that. The second thing they have to figure out is that when they make something that looks like that, they need to know how much of the solution they've made, and they need to know how many microliters of the dye they've added. They'll get to that point. If they have multiple tubes, sometimes they'll try making several different solutions and then comparing them to the original. That can be a good technique. Or sometimes they start light and they just go darker, darker, darker till they get the, until they think they get there. That's probably the most common thing I see my students do. At that point, they just calculate concentration. I wait until every team has told me their concentration. Sometimes I'll make them post it on, write it on the board, for example, or um, submit it in a Google form. And then I move on to percent error. So the final step of this lab, we do once again, every team has figured out what they think the concentration is. I encourage them to try uh, to kind of keep their work secret from other teams, maybe tell them they're competing with each other in this case. 
Um, although you could encourage collaboration, but I definitely don't want them to share their answers as teams until we go over it as a class. So let's say that a team has submitted and they have said that they think there are 0.72 microliters per milliliter. Sometimes you have to remind them about the unit. Well then, we're gonna calculate percent error. So I go through what is the formula for percent error with them. I usually write this as the actual value minus the calculated value over the actual value. And this is an absolute value. They have to trust that my actual value is correct. And as a teacher, sometimes you make a mistake and your actual isn't really very accurate. But I tell them to treat my measurement as the actual. So I'll go ahead and reveal to them that it was 0.48 microliters per milliliter. I am pretty particular about them listing units. Minus their calculation, each team will input their own. And then you divide all of that by the actual. Now the units cancel. And they subtracted a smaller number, a larger number from a smaller number. So it would be negative, but this is an absolute value. So if we take the difference, let's see if I can mental math this. 20, I believe it's 24. Ooh, this is gonna come out nice. I didn't even plan this. So it's gonna come out to 0.24 microliters per milliliter over 0 0.48 microliters per milliliter. Units cancel, and I can do that in my head. 24 divided by 48, it will come out to 0.5. Then they have to understand that's a, a fraction, or a decimal, sorry. So you have to multiply it by 100 or move the decimal two places. So their percent error was 50%. And every team compares their percent error. The team that has the lowest percent error was the closest to the actual answer. A couple of things to keep in mind there are ways you can switch this up and make this lab your own. You definitely do not have to do the percent error part. Some teachers may never tell their kids what the right answer is, because sometimes you can't know in science how close you came. That's kind of a philosophical thing. Some teachers might choose to grade their students based on how close they came to the actual value. I don't do that. I grade them based on how well they can explain their experimental designs. So they have to write up the steps of what they ultimately did in a way that is clear enough that someone else could follow their steps. I grade them based on their conclusion. So they have to show their work. What was your concentration and how did you come up with it? So they would have to include uh, this calculation that they made. And I grade them based on their ability to calculate their percent error. So their percent error might be 200% and I'm not gonna dock them. It's about understanding the process and how much error. If you wanna make this more challenging, I have in the past done things like given each team their own tube and the concentrations vary. And so I might label those tubes A, B, C, D, every team gets their own, but probably you don't have a lot of extra time right now and it's much easier to give them all the same. So if you run this lab, I would love to know how it goes. Just post a comment down below. And uh, the next video I'm gonna make related to this is about serial dilutions and how to do a serial dilution and calculate concentration. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe so you will see when that next video comes out. And I hope you have a wonderful day and that you love doing this lab with your kids. Bye.